Hey guys, it's Ted Bogart. We are back with the Ted Show. I've been trying to get this very talented young gentleman on the show for a long time. We're go I know how to say his first name. I'm going to let him say his last name, but Benoit. Uh, Benoit Glazier, if you're in America, and he can tell you the German and the French and all the different versions of that. Uh, Timaqua Arts Foundation, Timaqua Arts, you guys know all about it. Absolutely amazing. Been a force in the arts community here in Central Florida for a very long time, 20 plus years. Uh, the topic, of course, is Timaqua's story, bringing art to life since 2000. And we have the man, the myth, the legend, Benoit on. Welcome, my friend. How you doing? Very good. Nice to talk to you, Ted. Very nice to talk to you. I said Benoit correct, yes. I believe. Yes. Tell us how you said your last name to me, because it sounds so much prettier than I would say it. Benoit Glazer. So, I mean, yeah. doesn't that make you want to grab a croissant <laughs> and a nice glass of wine? I could listen to you all day, but we are going to hear, we're here to listen to you all day, which is great. Um, so they, the people love origin story. We're going to get into Timaqua uh, and the arts world in a little bit, but tell them a little bit about you, Benoit. Tell them your, uh, your journey, yeah. your journey. Well, I was, I grew up in the mountains north of Montreal. So in the Laurentian mountains. So the Appalachia of Canada. So that's where I grew up uh, in the woods. And uh, my dad and myself and my brother, we've built our house, our own house uh, in 1972 when I was uh, eight years old, we started. And, uh, and my dad passed away, you know, uh, when I was in high school. And so I finished, the house wasn't finished. So I finished the house Wow. Uh, by myself when I was 15 before I left for college. And so uh, this is this is kind of, it explains a lot, I think, when people, I don't tell that story that often, but when people learn about that, because then, of course, later on, I bought my first house that I bought in, in the suburbs in, of Montreal. I completely gutted and, you know, renovated. And, I um, love that. You know, because my wife had two, grand pianos and this was a small house and so I had to make room for piano. and then uh, of course life uh, is what it is I my father was a fiddler so my father was a, a, a fiddler yeah my father played violin and guitar and he sang and but he, he played traditional Quebecois folk music which is across well it's heavily influenced by uh, Irish folk music uh, but really, it came from the, the you know most uh, Quebecois people come from Brittany, the western the western tip, yes. the Celtic part of France, and so this is what influenced our folk music, and this is what I heard when I was growing up is uh, Quebecois folk music, which is like there's a little bit of bluegrass in there, but it's heavily influenced by Irish music and the French Celtic music. Um, so you know, fiddle, guitar, accordion. Uh, maybe bass, maybe drums, maybe uh, some other percussion instruments like the, 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 the spoons and all that kind of stuff. And um, there, that's where, how that's how I grew up. And uh, I never played. I never played anything, but I would listen a lot. And uh, when I was about maybe 13 years old, so we were in the new house uh, that we had just built or started. It took many years to finish, but. Um, and uh, I would listen, and eventually I said, "Hey, uh, you guys don't have a drummer, and you know maybe I can help." And uh, <laughs> uh, uh, my father could not read music, so he almost literally, at this instant, grabbed me by the ear, shoved me in the car. We went to town, which the closest little—I mean, the big town for us, but little town. <laughs> and uh, there was a jazz guitarist there. And for the whole summer, I had three lessons a week of theory because my nice. father was determined to give me the tools to understand music, which he didn't have. And so he understood music fine. Thank you very much. But just not, you know, the traditional and the like he couldn't read music. So so that's what I did. I did that. And uh, since then, after like six years of university and 30 years after that of writing and arranging, composing, I still have not learned anything that I, <laughs> that I, I learned everything I know now. I love that. Um, and then, did you, was, were you the talented one in the family? You said your dad couldn't read music, but he was musically inclined. 
Oh, he was very much my his mom was a well known filler, like she was on TV and everything. Um, he was not on TV, he was an electrician, but he was uh, he was very active. He would actually like go, go out, like his weekends or his days off were spent like traveling in the countryside and stopping when you you, you heard like somebody play the tune a different way. Like he would go okay. see the old guys, you know, to see how they played this particular tune and all that stuff. Um, my my brother, who's uh, ten months younger than me, he is the talented one, but he's a plumber. So, <laughs> so there you go. But Interesting. So, did anyone besides you go into the arts full time? No, uh, I have a cousin who's a who's a writer. So she's a poet. Uh, she's also a musician. Uh, on my father's side, uh, you know, we had big families, and just so you know, like. Uh, on my mom's side, we had like s maybe 66 cousins at my level, like that. And then wow. on the other side, it was more than 50 also. So, I mean, you know, my mom had nine sisters, for example. So the, oh. those were big Catholic families, you know. <laughs> yeah, um, I guess but, that's true. Yeah, but the, no, I'm, I'm, um, uh, I'm the only full-time musician in, in either families. But uh, I, my mom, uh, you know, she was a school teacher for many years, but she always kept like she did other degrees at night and she always kept uh, up on her schooling. And she ended up like quitting teaching at, in her 50s, go back to law school. So she's the uh, she's the scholar uh, in, in the family. How cool is that? That's yeah. So, awesome. so she has several degrees. Like I only have two degrees. She has like multiple degrees a master like the equivalent of master's degree in law she has a specialized law degree she has uh, several bachelors and love that she went back to law school in her 50s That's oh yeah yeah she's a phenomenon i could talk about her for a long time my dad too was an inventor like uh, uh no so you get the creative you have the creative gene but you know i think a lot of people we before we went live we had a couple of people ask us you know the arts is always it's always a challenge to figure out how to make a fruitful career for yourself out of the arts. It shouldn't be that way, but it just is. Um, so when you when you made the decision, whenever that was, that this was going to be your vocation, this is what you were going to dedicate your life to. What yeah. was that like? Was it easy? Was it was it just something that was so easy for you to do because you had such a passion, or did you struggle with it? So here's the thing. I, I went to high school. I played drums and my, that was my first instrument. And so I wanted to play. I was doing I was I wanted to be a physicist when I was a kid. So I was doing all science classes. I had no time in high school for music classes. But after school, there was a big band. So I wanted to join the big band. But I was an excellent drummer in the big band. So he had an opening in, in uh, for tenor and clarinet. So that's what I did. I picked up the tenor and clarinet. And in high school, that's what I played in senior high school. Uh, and then uh, my dad died the day before the deadline to apply for college. So, um, and Sorry. so I actually took a decision that day to go into music instead. And so I applied to three colleges in music. And then when the letters came back to ask about what instrument I played uh, to set up the auditions and stuff, I said, uh, I kind of was scratching my head because I wasn't really in love with the clarinet or the tenor. I mean, I would clarinet I played mostly, but tenor also. And uh, so I went around the band room and I play, I tried every other instrument and the trumpet was the one instrument I could not make a sound out of. So <laughs> I, I put that down and I applied, that's what I applied for. And I had six weeks to prepare um, for my audition on trumpet, which I could not play. And so that's that um, tells you a little bit about who I am. and. And uh, I actually was accepted at all three colleges. And um, of course, you were. And You're then, talented. Well, it's it's. I basically did not go to any classes. I went to see the, the assistant principal, of my, of my uh, you know, for the senior class, and I said, "Listen, I can make trouble, or you find me a room and I can practice all day long, but it's not yes. going to be anywhere anything else, you know." So he find me. He found me a room by the boiler room. I went there, go there in the morning, you know, stay there, and uh, and then go back home and then practice at home. And so I practiced like 16 hours a day for six weeks wow. and I kept that up. And so I ended up six years later uh, of college, I was already, I, I was teaching at McGill University because I was pretty intense in my studies. And so I ended up, uh, you know, my 
like my last two years of, of uh, college, I was playing 40 hours of big band every week. Wow. And so I was playing in 15 different bands. And so- um, What were you playing? You were playing trumpet. clarinet? Trumpet, yeah. I played so trumpet. you did play trumpet. You oh, went on to it, even though you couldn't make a sound out of it. That was well, your- After six weeks, I could make a sound out of it. <laughs> I got accepted in, in trumpet at all three colleges. I didn't sound good, but I mean, it took me- <laughs> I still don't sound good. So this, this is a lifelong pursuit. Yeah? <laughs> But um, but you know I I uh, I, de I delved into it and at first you know like the way that you shape your career is when you lay down before you get to sleep you know the dreams that you have like the how do you see yourself yes. like the, the visualization the visualization of yourself like so at first I saw I saw myself as a trumpet soloist and then very quickly I found out that I was good at leading you know bands and so. Uh, so I ended up, you know, doing my 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 degree was in choral conducting and uh, uh, with with choral conducting. Yeah, it's fascinating. Yeah, just because we had an amazing uh, uh, teacher, choral conductor. He actually was the conductor for the Studio de Musique Ancienne, so ancient music, so early music uh, specialist. Um, and he just passed away just recently, but uh, he he was fabulous, and so I just. You know, went that there because it was uh, he was a, such a good teacher, and uh, in any case, uh, I started uh, conducting. I was touring North America when I was eighteen years old, um, wow. conducting. You know, a uh, hundred piece orchestras. Like so, uh, can I ask you a question about conducting? Totally sure. off on topic, but off topic. Does this really do something? What is that? Because you see it, I'm going to tell you that a lot of people, the very first time, and I'll confess it, most kids saw it on Bugs Bunny. Yeah, yeah. Learn about the conductor. Explain yeah. to us what goes on with that, because I've always wondered how that works. Does the, does the, uh, do all of the players, uh, everybody who's participating, they know to follow you, but don't they already know the song? How does that work? Well, here's the thing. Conducting... That part is actually the tenth thing on the ten that on, <laughs> on the top of the top ten, ten list of what to do to be a good conductor. Mm. But it is important. Um, so, diff, like I, I've I've went to different styles. I've conducted like DCI drum corps. I've conducted big bands. That's not important for big band conducting, um, you know. But for an orchestra, that is important, and it's and it's. But how you re how you're prepared? How well you know the music? How well you are? How good you are at uniting uh, the group you have in front of you into a common goal, which is to play that music as good as possible, as well as possible, and with a, an intent. When you're playing something that's a classical repertoire, whether it's big band or orchestra, you know there are there's new music and there's a well established music with traditions and things how much you want to push those boundaries, uh, how much you want to influence your personal ideas and experience and uh, feelings you have about that music, how much of uh, how passive you're going to be and let the, the, the group you have in front of you give you their contribution or not passive, but collaborative. Um, all of these things, like the, the, the shades, like being a conductor is the most subtle way of being a manager there is on the planet in love that. So you can, you could, I could, I could lead a team of NASA uh, engineers and, and, you know, for a launch given like, it's as complex, it's maybe even more complex than that. Like in, in, because it's not all black and white. Every, right. Everybody is, is giving you their interpretation of what you are asking of them. And yes. so it's a really, it's the most complicated job in the world. Like, I'm not joking. At the same time, it can be the easiest job in the world, depending what group you have in front of you. And so if I, if I, if I conduct either my own music or uh, something that I'm, that is part of me, it, I'm so intimately in tune with it and and um, that I know so well then and I and the group in front of me is like elite players and and all that stuff then all I have to do is just you know show them with my face with my my words in rehearsal um, 
what I'm looking for and they give it to me right away and it's a joy and it's a, it's the easiest thing in the world. Now, if you have a mixture of like incredible musicians and students or, you know, a community group where, with like incredible players and young or less advanced players or that kind of, like it can be the hardest job in the world. <laughs> No matter what, it is the most subtle way that you can, like, of that you can find to be a manager. That's what you are when you're connected. Never thought about it as a manager. That's All right, wait. I've got to ask, as we're beginning to already run out of time, we haven't even talked about Timaqua. So let's talk about Timaqua, uh, bringing art to life since 2000. Tell people who don't know about Timaqua what it is. So, well, what it is now. So it started at just one concert in, in our house. That's what it started like as. And it was unassuming, a one-time thing. What it has become is... I'm still here. I'm just watching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what has now become, it is a... Hopefully, that's the goal, but that's what we're doing. We work really hard to integrate several art forms together and to integrate... Uh, a new way of integrating the experience from the performers and the audience point of view. And so all of that. So integration is huge for us. Collaboration is huge. So we collaborate with the opera, with the ballet, with um, the Atlantic Center for the Arts, with uh, all kinds of like with the Civic Minded Five, with the Central, Co uh, Central Florida Composers Forum, with... Uh, uh, CFC Arts with the Central Florida Vocal Arts with uh, Opera del Sol. Like I can. I love Josh. Them. I love Teresa. And so we, yeah. So we collaborate with as many people as we can. Not to mention the colleges. We like everyone. We have different levels of collaboration. And when you say collaborate, what happens there? Like well, either we pr we help them with the venue or the facilities we have because if you don't know, we like our. A lot of our activities happen in, in our venue, and our venue happens to be my living room because I designed and built a house it. in 2007. We moved in that has a 100 seat auditorium in it uh, over three floors, and it's also a, a, a full fledged broadcast and recording studio. And so, because of that, for example, last fall, uh, everyone for college auditions, so high schools, for grad school auditions, so colleges, for opera <laughs> auditions, so everyone, for musicians auditions who were trying to get a job uh, for an orchestra and all that stuff, they all came here to to do their aud video audition videos because we have the setup for that. And it's a good hall with the good acoustics and all that stuff. So, and we do, you know, normally, pre-pandemic, we would do like 80 events a year at the end and um, we live stream everything. So now the pandemic hit and we, our pivot took one day. We, from love it, locked down to the next day. The next day, I started broadcasting past events every day for two weeks, and then twice a week. So smart. Which I just stopped like a couple, a few weeks ago, three weeks ago, because now our events are back to like our schedule is kind of back to normal. We are at reduced capacity. We installed air filters, like biocide air filters. Like we take safety very seriously. So we are only at 25% capacity right now. But, you know, as people get vaccinated, we are going to ramp it up as it is safe to do so. Uh, our COVID protocol is relatively strong and relatively easy to implement because we're small and 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 uh, flexible as an organization. So let, let me ask you really quick. Somebody asked um, on one of the other platforms, just to clarify, in your home, yeah, you have a three-story, 100-seat theater. Yes, yes. We do theater, we do music, we do visual arts. We do, a lot of it is combined uh, together. Uh, we have these new artists in resonance projects that stemmed from the pandemic uh, where we join, uh, uh, let's say, a musician, a visual artist, and a poet. That's the next one, for example. So this coming week, we have a, 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 a artist in residence project, our fifth one. About every six weeks, we have one of those. Uh, and for the first time, the final performance will be open to the public because we can do it now. So we do two shows, 7 p.m. and 8.30 p.m. 
and the live stream is good for both, uh, whether it's free or a lot of our stuff is pay what you want or it's ticketed with a fixed ticket price. Either way, the live stream is you know available for both shows. Uh, and so the touring musicians come here, they perform for you like twice now. Uh, and you know we've had like big names in their field. We don't do pop, we don't do like things that are very, very easily accessible to anyone. But we do make the arts accessible to anyone who wants to access them. So our Sunday nights are give what you know, pay what you want. So it's donations based or unfixed ticket price or what voluntary ticket price, call it what you want. The stream is always free for those. It's always free. It's it, we hope you'll donate just because it costs money to put these. Of course, free. listen, guys. Just for the record, uh, Benoit might not say it, but I'm going to say it. Yeah, if it says pay what you want, they really want you to pay a little more than that because yeah. it's giving back to the arts. So that's the whole scenario. Yeah. You want to yeah. give. Back. How do people? Because we're running out of time. I want to make yeah. sure people know how to find you if they want to get involved, if they want to donate, they want to uh, inquire about performances. Yes. Uh, what's the best way for them to reach you, my friend? Timucua.com is very good. So Timucua.com, T-I-M-U-C-U-A.com. There, the schedule is there. If you want to perform at the house, there's a form there on the About page uh, to fill out. Uh, there's uh, a lot of information. To donate through the collaborative campaign, the United Arts Collaborative Campaign right now, you can text uh, TAF to 71777. That's super easy. So that, yeah. you dial you, you, with your with your phone, you dial 71777, text TAF, and then it brings you to a link to donate to through United Arts to Tim Quest. Okay. And they will match your donation by 15% or 30% if you have not donated in the past three years, which is huge for us. Uh, we have an incredible board that has doubled just at the this year. Like in the middle of the pandemic, uh, because people realize how important the arts are to their yes. life. And so it is very important to us to make it accessible. And then in return, we hope that the community will support us. And it's a self-perpetuating, beautiful thing that you know makes life better for everyone involved. You make you all make life better in Central Florida and have for a very long time. I think it's it's interesting that uh, so many arts organizations have had to pivot, which you did too. But I love to hear the fact that you've come out of that. Uh, you're coming out of that. It is so important. But I think a lot of people um, really haven't refocused on the arts. So that's why it's so important for shows like this for people to uh, reconnect with Timaqua and get involved in their arts community and give back or perform or just get in touch with Benoit and see what you can do to make the arts world even better. Because guess what? Just because uh, you're doing better doesn't mean the arts community isn't still trying to figure out how to recoup from 2020. So, yeah. so what are we doing? Like people, one of the easy ways you can help, go to YouTube on our Timuqua, on our Timuqua Arts. So our channel is Timuqua Arts on YouTube and subscribe to the channel, like our videos, Watch our live streams uh, from home. You can do that from anywhere around the world. Yes. And that helps us a lot because eventually we'll grow our channel and we'll reach more people because, as you know, the YouTube algorithm helps people who grow and it, yep. it's another, like it's a snowball. And we are, we are now at more than 1,000 subscribers. Nice. And it's, it's starting to grow now and uh, hopefully it'll grow faster and for a long time. And we hope that's going to happen. So. All right, my friend, that was awesome. Timaqua.com, Benoit, you're amazing. You guys, get, get behind the arts. They all need our help. And in all honesty, the, still the product that you all are putting out, the, the amount of talent that is still giving back to the community is overwhelming. So let's get behind you and support you and everybody who utilizes and is able to benefit from Timaqua. Thanks for being on the show, my friend. That was awesome. Thank you, Thank you so All much. Right. Benoit, awesome. the Timaqua story. Go to Timaqua.com, T-I-M-U-C-U-A-U-C-A.com. It's right there. Thank you, my friend. Appreciate you. All you do. All right, guys, we'll be back tomorrow. We'll see you soon. Bye.